Welcome back to another episode of The Dump. I'm really excited today. We've got Emily Arthur joining us. Emily, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Very nice. And Tora, how are you? Good. It's a pleasure to be here alongside you, Richie. We've got two half-pipe riders in the room today, two female half-pipe riders. And oh, oh. we're really excited to talk to Emily today. Emily's 22. She's from the Shire. Uh, she's competed in one Olympic Games in Pyeongchang 2018, and she's heading... Uh, to the Winter Olympics in China in February 2022, which is, I think is like just over five months away. So, um, you know, Emily's story is a story that I don't really know well and I don't think a lot of people listening know well. And so I'm really keen to kind of dive into where Emily came from, her roots, her career, uh, what her goals are and kind of where her head is at heading into the Olympics and what post-Olympics Emily looks like. So... Let's dive in. Snowboards come down the slope and they're dangerous because they're just like a missile. Sean White's there. He's helicopter in here. Bang your mom and your girlfriend and then uh, set the board on fire. All right, all right, all right. Um, before we kick things off, I just wanted to give a, a shout out to Hard Fizz. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Emily. Woo. It tastes nice. It tastes very nice. And also, Fizzy. a big mm. shout out to Bird and Snowboards. They've been backing Transfer for over 10 years. And uh, yeah, thanks to Hard Fizz and Bird for helping us bring this podcast series to life. Without them, you know, we wouldn't be able to pull it off. So thanks, guys. Telling the stories of the Australian shredders. Mm -hmm. Australian and New Zealand shredders. And New Zealand and shredders. Um, We've just... Uh, We've got to add some more more names to the, yeah, the we list got some, now. We got, we some, got some coming up. We've got some big names coming up. But yep. today we've got Emily Arthur. Emily, uh, what's going on? Wh where are you at the moment? Uh, I've just been in Jindy, training, riding, going to the gym, sort of. It was a bit of a hiatus there for a minute with COVID shutting everything down, but gave us a chance to get out in the backcountry, do some splitboarding, and yeah, I'm hyped, pretty hyped to go back to Sydney though too, but... It's been fun. And Emily and I, we both ride yeah. for Roxy. Yeah. And we've been out shooting the new campaign. So uh, took her out on a first split boarding mission. Yeah. Got her dialed in with all the gear. And then we've been just, yeah, finishing up campaign shoot with Roxy too. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's cool. Resorts yeah. have been shut down. We've been out in the backcountry working. First time split boarding? Yeah. So Tora took me out for my first time to do a little practice up at Dead Horse and then straight into the shoot. And it was funny because Bowen at the end was like, Oh my god, Emily, your split boarding's gotten so much better. Cause like literally the first day I had to stop, take my like board off and just walk up. Cause I just couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, Emily, it was very challenging conditions. <laughs> so. It was so icy rough. dead horse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, no uh, Guthiga actually. Icy Guthiga. And you going? It was just so yeah. variable. I was just Some sliding. parts were nice, others were wind scathed and thick yeah. ice crust. Yeah. And yeah, you yeah. did very well though. Yeah, we and got there. Good. We got there. I think I. Can now split board. Only now, though. <laughs> <laughs> Claim it. Yeah. Um, and so, Jindabyne is your base for winter seasons normally? Not normally. It has been for the last two years just because I can't travel to Cadrona. But um, I think from maybe like age 13 to probably last winter, I was going to Cadrona every winter. For the seasons? For the seasons, yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay, or cool. for at least a couple of weeks. And, and where's home for you? The Shire from South Sydney. Okay, Cronulla, cool. if you guys know Home that. is where the heart is, yeah. really. You know? <laughs> do you miss you just, it? I do. I do love being there, but I also, the second I'm home, I can't wait to go away again. Yeah. Like, I just love traveling. I hate being in one place for too long. Like being on the road? Yeah, I love it. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I guess what I was saying in the intro is, you know, like, I don't really, and I think a lot of listeners would be really interested to know, you know, like, where what's Emily Arthur's story like where you know where did you grow up and how did this you know passion for snowboarding come about yeah I guess I think I had a pretty normal ish childhood like I'm just a shyer girl I guess and I know that comes with a lot of connotations everyone hates shyer but um what, I don't just, I don't know any really, of those connotations really so can I, you, like, I yeah, always I don't, say I'm from the, the shy and they're the always like oh my god you're a shy girl like I don't know. I guess I don't know what that means. I don't really know. You're either. just Emily. Yeah, I don't know. Just like basic. I think there's like some rough people maybe from the shy. Everyone says like 
I'm from yeah. Cooma. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. If anyone asks, I just say I'm from around Wollongong. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah. Anyway, <laughs> from the Shire, grew up in the Shire. Um, yeah, I played a lot of sport growing up. I did a lot of surfing and skating. And my mum went to the snow a lot as a kid. And her parents had a lodge in Charlotte's. So she did a lot of skiing grow up. And then so my parents took me and my brother to the snow. Like we've both been on skis since we were four. And, um, and then, yeah, I don't know. My dad always snowboarded. So then when my brother was six, he started snowboarding. And then because back then in Parisha, you had to wait until you were six before you're allowed to snowboard on the hill. Oh, you couldn't do it any younger. I didn't younger. know there was that rule. Yes. Yeah, wait, so, what? Huh. You couldn't yeah, snowboard. You weren't allowed to snowboard so under the age of six. So if you were five, you couldn't, you couldn't strap into a snowboard. No. Who's checking? Yeah, I don't Excuse know. Me? I guess maybe my parents were just trying to play by the rules a little bit. But <laughs> that was like a resort regulated thing. Yeah, or? yeah. Six. Or maybe and like you couldn't get lessons until you. I don't know Pro- what it probably was. Lessons, yeah, probably hey? lessons. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. So I waited until I was six, and then I got on a snowboard, and then. Um, one of our family friends was like, you guys need to check out this inner schools thing. You know, you race for your school and all this stuff. So then me and my brother started doing that. And then and then we joined the Winter Sports Club program in Perisha. And then they took us into the park one day. I was like, this is way more fun than racing gates. So me <laughs> yeah. and my brother started um, riding park. And then obviously we rode the pipe as well. And then, yeah. And so then, what year was this? I reckon I would have been about eight. Okay. When I started doing Winter Sports Club. Well, I was in year two when I was in doing inner schools. So, yeah, like seven or eight. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I don't know, just started going down like, more I'm and more. I was like, I'm trying to do the maths. I'm like, you're 22. My, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> a so really long does time. that work, work out to be? <laughs> yeah, so I would have been that, yeah, seven or eight. And then, I don't know, we just kept begging our parents to go more and more and more. And then they... Um, we bought into a lodge because it was just so expensive to get places in Jindy. So yeah. bought into a lodge so that we could go down every weekend and yeah. Weekend warriors. Oh my God. I can't believe my parents used to do that. Like straight from work, Friday, pick us up from school, take us to the snow, snowboard, Saturday, Sunday, Absolute straight from the mountain legends. back to Sydney. So what was Winter Sports Club? Is that like is that like the development squad thing? Like where... the Parisha program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I and did that get... one too. Yeah. yeah. It's a good mm-hmm. program. It's good. Yeah. yeah, it was. It sick. was the only thing back when exactly. I was first Me starting too. into Me too. snowboarding. So, so you just you just did school, shoot down on Friday night. Yeah. And Who was your coach? Oh, I had a couple coaches. I had Sav. I think it was his name, Aaron Savage, Adam Savage. I don't know. He was my like first coach. Yeah. And then um, I had him for a while, and then I had, I think I graduated with a sports club with him, and then yeah. I started just riding by myself a bit in Parisha because I'd go over to New Zealand and I'd actually did the New Zealand version of Winter Sports Club and I got coached by Mitchie Brown. Oh, oh sick. sick. Yeah, so shout sick. out to Mitch. Yeah, he's, big he's, shout out. He's, he's still so rad. And, yeah, so I ripped over there. I actually grew up riding, well, grew up, went from like age 12, me and Zoe Sinnott were in the same team. No way. Yeah, so we used to ride parks. We used to, she used to have to ride pipe with me in the morning and then we'd go over and ride slope together in the afternoon with Tian Collins and Mitchie Davin and a bunch of those so boys. So at this wow. point, yeah. was Snow Park still open? I was got, that the tail end of Snow Park's yeah, days? I yeah, I had one day at Snow Park okay. and then they were done. Because I remember Zoe like yeah, as a young, young girl. Yeah. Like people going, whoa, she's like the next thing. She rips. Yeah. She absolutely. And she ripped back then she when we were riding as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, 11, 12. She's something. cool. Very, very cool. Yeah. But yeah, so rode in New Zealand with them and then... So yeah. what, what age did you stop doing seasons in Australia and made the move to New Zealand? I reckon I would have been about 13, 14. Okay, cool. Yeah, and started going there and I stayed with a homestay family for the first two years I went, which was actually sick because I got to meet a lot of kids through that. And yeah. I think as a kid, staying at homestay programs is such a quick way to make friends in a new country. Yeah. Um, And then... I made friends with a bunch of Kiwi girls and then from then we would just like rent this place together every winter. It was really fun. So it good. was such a good, I don't know, I loved it. So made how me grow long up pretty quick. did you do yeah. the New Zealand program? Like were you a part of that every year? I, or Yeah, I think I did HBC for like three winters. Okay. Yeah, and then I started, I went over with my brother for one year actually, maybe in 2016. He came over with me and then... Um, 2017, I think maybe Mitchie even coached me again. Yeah. 
bit, bit in and out of the program, but yeah. And at that, at, at this point, were you like dabbling in all disciplines of snowboarding? Like, were you racing? Were you slope style, big air pipe or was yeah, it just... Yeah, I kind of did it all. I think I did even board across just like in the like junior series events just to do, get like the overall title i guess yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so i think i did like board across events maybe till i was 14 but yeah definitely did slope style i actually competed in slope style at the youth olympics when i was 16 as well i did both pipe and slope um, where were the youth olympics in Lillehammer in norway yep. oh, yeah yeah okay. they were sick they i were do so remember fun. those ones yeah i kind of got thrown into it i was sort of like kind of leaving slope style at that point and like you should just do both and i was like okay yeah i guess um but yeah, so I was doing everything probably until I was about 16 and then I stopped and just did pipe. And why did you choose pipe? I was just better at it and it's I find it's so fun. Like I feel like pipe's one of those things where I could go and just do straight A's in the pipe all day, every day and just have the best time. Whereas I feel I like feel in you. slope, I feel like I always need to be doing a trick to stay interested in it. Yeah. And I think that's just me because I just I just love pipe and I love... Yeah, I could do straight A's all day. And so, yeah, just stuck with it. Pipe it is. Pipe it is. Pipe it is. Yeah. Was there ever a moment like that you that you knew you wanted to pursue snowboarding, like give it the best go you could to see how you could take it or you're just kind of like taking opportunities as they came? I think pretty quickly I was like, I want to do this yeah. forever kind of thing. I like super young, like when I was like nine. I was like, was there a defining moment, like a, I, a moment that you remember? I actually, I, cause I got put on the development program when I was nine. And to me, I was on the development Australian team, but all I heard as a nine year old was Australian team. So I was like, <laughs> I've made it. I'm on the Australian team. Like, this is it. This is my yes. future. Um, but the way I actually got on the team is pretty funny. It was like a talent ID camp. They used to run those. Like yeah. they would come and invite all the kids growing up and they'd pick you for the team. And But the pipe was closed and it was Sunday and we were going home and I was like, no, 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 I'm riding the pipe. I don't care. And my dad's like, all right, let's do it. And then so we ducked the rope and I started riding the pipe. And then the coach, like Ben Alexander yeah, at the time, came yeah. over and was like, you should just come ride pipe with us and like join the team and come go to the States. And then, so my family, I'm pretty sure they took out a loan and they, to get me over to the States wow. when I was Aww. nine. And then from then I was like, yeah, I'm doing this forever. So your first trip overseas was nine years old. Nine years old. With the Australian development team. Yeah. And mum came for to four Mammoth? weeks. To Mammoth? Where'd you go? No, to Colorado. Colorado. And we rode okay. Copper. And um, yeah, so mum was there for four weeks and then she left for two weeks by myself. But we actually, that was the house where the Christmas tree caught on fire. I don't know if you heard about that story, Tora. I don't think so. Yeah. Tell us, tell us. Okay, so, a bunch of Aussie kids yeah. away training over Christmas period. Yeah, yeah. and um, so I was nine and like up, so I was with the Stavely. So Luke Stavely oh, yeah, was yeah. little as well, Cameron Lauren. and then, yeah, They're pretty crazy. Oh, my God, I love those boys. I miss them. I wish they still snowboarded. But um. I, yeah, so I, I think I, I see them. I see pictures of them. Yeah, they still rip around every Cattleman's Rail think. Jam. Yeah, every yeah, year yeah, they yeah, come yeah, out yeah, and yeah, 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 rip yeah. that up. But yeah. um, yeah, so we were all there, and then the coach's girlfriend was Austrian, and it's tradition over there. It's called the lighting of the Christmas tree. And you put candles on the Christmas tree, <laughs> but we didn't have candles, so she put a sparkler on the Christmas tree, and the Christmas tree just all Ignited. went up in flames. And we all had made like paper decorations, <laughs> so they was just. <laughs> <laughs> fuel to the fire and then um Aww. yeah so we burnt down the christmas tree all our presents got burnt and like the sprinklers <gasps> went off because we were in this big mansion in silver because there's like 10 kids and oh like we completely flooded the whole house like it was so bad but yeah and then so my mum gets a phone call on christmas eve and it's nicole the stavely's mum she was the yeah. house mum and she goes there's been a fire um everyone's okay but i don't have any minutes on my phone so i gotta go and oh, that was oh my the phone call my mum got on Christmas morning because they're a day ahead. You guys literally got coal for Christmas. Literally got coal <laughs> for Christmas. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it teaches you a bit yeah. of uh, character young, yeah. hey? Well, yeah. sorry, Santa isn't coming. Yeah. yeah. So I think mum kind of freaked You've out a bit. Bad. She's like, I sent my nine-year-old daughter away by herself for Christmas and... She's been in a house fire, so I think that stressed her out a bit. So I think mum started travelling me so for a couple of years after where that. where were you? What happened? You saw the Christmas tree go up 
in flames. Every you were rushed outside. What yeah, happened? we all ran outside. There was fresh, like four feet of snow. So we're all out there in our pajamas, no socks on, no shoes on. We're all just outside. A cop car comes. We all, a couple of us sit in the back of a cop car and we all get locked in because the doors don't work from oh. inside the car. <laughs> so we're just stuck in this car. There's a big shotgun in the, on the front seat and two of the boys are in the front seat and they're touching the gun and touching all the stuff. Just imagine like a bunch of 12-year-olds, yeah, Australian yeah, yeah. 12-year-olds. Oh. And like, yeah, so the house fully flooded. There was like a waterfall like running out our front oh, steps. No. We couldn't get back in the house like... It was crazy. We stayed on for another two weeks, I think, in that house, but it was tight. We were all shoved into some bedrooms then, but yeah, pretty good first trip away. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> all right. But yeah, it's a um, good one. And so I can imagine your first trip away, it's kind of like Disneyland, right? Oh, like yeah. everything, like you think Front Valley is freaking oh pumping. God, yes. Everything's on steroids. It's like nothing you've ever seen before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I get to Copper and like we go up to the first chair, like the Eagle. And yeah. I was like, okay, we're at the top. And they're like, no, there's like another three chairlifts before you get to the top. Like it was yeah. wild being <laughs> at a resort where there's like four different mountains to the one thing. And yeah. like, you know, Breck's insane. Yeah. Breck is huge. And so, um, yeah, it was really cool. Going overseas and seeing all that. And, and th- I can imagine, like, you just wanted to go back every year oh, after yeah. that. Oh, yeah, and I did. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure <laughs> I've been to Summer go. County every year since then. Same yeah. same place you've been going overseas? Yeah, yeah, yeah to Copper, for okay, sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. And with development teams or different arrangements as I'm, time went on? I've never gone back with the Australian team. I joined, um, like, a local team over there when I was 12 or 13, yeah, so I took a couple of years off. Like I just didn't go overseas because I was a kid. And then when I was 13, I did like a full six-month chunk in Copper yeah. and trained with like a local coach in Copper and did like all the rev tours. Oh, no, I would have been too young. USASA events yep. yeah. and did like the USASA nationals and all that yep. stuff. But, yeah. And then how on earth do you fit school in with – all of this stuff. I didn't. I no. really don't think I did. Like they would, the teachers <laughs> Honestly, would give, like me, <laughs> give me work to do, but like, I don't know, I would kind of do it, but it wasn't really that important till I got into high school. And then when I was in high school, I wouldn't do any work. But as soon as I got home and we did like the mid-year exams, I would just study the whole night before, learn all of the content and then just sit the exam and I was fine because I, it was almost more fresh in my brain. Because I yeah. read it that night and then all the kids are like, how do you keep getting these grades like you're not even here? And I was I like... I guess you're not getting flogged by a book every day. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I literally just read all the key points and then go to the exam. Whereas they're like trying to write an essay on something they learnt 10 weeks ago. Oh and I learnt it the night before. I wish it was that easy for me. I remember I just, being like <laughs> three months just catching up on all the schoolwork, getting the assessments in. Dude, yeah, they, they, that sounds amazing. I think they honestly <laughs> just couldn't be bothered to deal yeah. with it. So they were just like, here's the work if you do it. Sick. You, in. you just got to come and pass the exams when you get back. So. so did you do a distance education program or did your school just facilitate that They kind, kind of, of put up with it until year 10. And okay. then they were like, you got to go somewhere else. Like, you can't be a senior here and do this. Yeah. And I was like, okay, fair enough. So I did distance ed, but that was just as bad. That was almost worse because they actually wanted me to hand stuff in every week. Yeah, I you, was like, I think that was my problem. Yeah, yeah, that was a problem. You actually <laughs> had someone sitting on your I actually had to get the assessments in on time. And yeah, yeah, so I actually had to start the doing the schoolwork. So, um, but then a teacher kind of slipped up and told me that to actually legally pass the grade, you only need to do 50% of the content. Oh. So I literally just like scraped through while I was overseas and then just actually did the schoolwork when I was at home and that made up 50% of the work. And then so they passed me with 50% content. Amazing. And yeah. you finished year 12? Yeah, finished year 12. I did year 12 over two years though. Okay. But the worst part was I would go and sit my HSC at my old school. So I was the old random girl rocking up back at school in like oh. mufti clothes <laughs> and I had the oldest like school ID number. So I had to go sit at the front of the school oh. hall. Like there was no hiding any of it. And because I traveled so much growing up, I'm like still on my P's. So I rocked up to my HSC exam two years ago on my red P's and I was like 20. <laughs> You know what? I, I did like clock that the other day. Yeah. But I didn't I was just like, Oh yeah, Emily's young. I didn't I didn't think about it. No, yes, yeah, so I was uh-huh. literally for a long time living the life of a seventeen year old, but I was actually like twenty. I was I did my HSC exam and I was on my red P's as a twenty year old. Amazing. Yeah. Not really. Right. It was kind of embarrassing, but <laughs> nah, it means nothing. Yeah. But yeah, so I did my <laughs> HSC. Love snowboarding. Yeah. 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 
And then, so when did like, I guess, since you've finished school, like when did you start competing in those kind of like World Cup, World Champ events? I did my first World Cup when I was 14. I did terribly. I think I got like second last or something, but I didn't care because I was just happy to be there. It's all about the experience. Yeah, exactly. And then I actually, a couple of people complained that I was, because I was actually a year too young, but because it was in New Zealand and I was turning 15, it was okay or yeah. something crazy. Huh. But yeah, people were complaining, being like, why is she here? She's only 14. Why but would they complain? I don't know. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because I like came like w- second last. I'm so. like, you didn't take out the event. <laughs> no, so. exactly. I don't know. People were just, yeah. So I started doing World Cups when I was 14 and I've done, besides um, the last winter that I took off, I'd been doing on the World Cup tour yep. since 14. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Did you um, full-time World Cup tour since 14? Pretty much. I wouldn't do, like, the ones in Europe. Mm-hmm. I would just do basically all the Grand Prix because my dad was like, you're not going to go to the States and then fly to Europe and then fly to Kazakhstan and then fly. Like, yeah, just, it's, it's not it's a... It's a lot. I reckon that was pretty brutal with the way the circuits um, put together because yeah. you're literally going from one continent to another in, like, a week. And you almost and go back, back and again. forth. You go back and forth. Yeah. yeah. I just couldn't afford it. Like, we were just like, let's just do the ones in the States. You know, you can drive from Utah to Colorado to Mammoth. We'll just do those. And that's all I basically did. Like, last year, Lux Open was the first Lux Open I've ever done. Oh. Yeah, cause, yeah, because I just never wanted was to it go. The best event you've ever oh done, my gosh, too. So good. I <laughs> love Lux. Open is oh my god, that pipe is insane. Yeah. You, what happened at the Lux Open this last winter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I well, I rocked up to the event and I wasn't on the start list. Was the first thing. I didn't get put in the Did event. Did your heart drop? Oh my god, drop. So it was the night before practice. The whole Lux Open, actually, the whole prep was just a nightmare. So I hadn't been in a pipe for 10 months because I could, like, we couldn't travel to Sars Bay. We couldn't yeah. travel to Kits because we weren't allowed to leave the country. So I hadn't been in a pipe for 10 months. I rock up. Um, it's the night before the first day of practice. I get a call from James Jackson, the Red Bull coach. Yeah. He's like, hey, um, you're not on the start list. I was like, what do you mean I'm not on the start list? And he's oh, like, yeah, God. you haven't been entered in the comp. And so I start scrambling around. I'm calling everyone from Snow Australia, like, why am I on this start list? Like, put me on the start list. We figure it out pretty quickly, but that was the first stressful thing. <laughs> the second thing, we rock up and my COVID results got lost. The laboratory lost them. And so I wasn't allowed to ride the pipe because they didn't know if I had COVID to or not. To train beforehand. I wasn't allowed to train. So, oh, and I didn't fuck. have a phone in Europe. And then, so we're just like trying to find free Wi-Fi at the bottom of Lark so I can organize where my fucking COVID results were. And then, so we finally figured that out, but I missed the first two hours of practice. And so I hadn't been in a pipe for 10 months. I just missed the first two hours of practice. Oh and so we God. get in there, start writing pipe. It was really fun. I got to see all my friends and I'm like, I don't know if I'm allowed to hug you or not, but I've missed you all so much because yeah. I took that whole year off as well. And so that was good. I had two pretty good days of practice and then I had a pretty good comp day considering that I had, yeah, basically a year and a half off and I finished in top 10. So I was pretty hyped with that, but it was really, really stressful first couple of days. Top 10. So does that, is that into finals? Is that? I didn't make nah, the finals. It's finals eight. Eight. Yeah. Eight. But I was just 10 pretty, for men? Uh, 12, I think for men maybe. What I was that? like... Uh, depends on the field size. Depends on the field, field size. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm like, sometimes oh, really finals impressive. can be six. Yeah, but yeah, well done. Yeah. yeah I, I know I would have been rattled if that was all happening to me. Yeah. Yeah. I was pretty stressed. <laughs> I was like, I'm going up against these girls. I haven't been in a pipe, but I was pretty hyped. And I was just like happy to be happy because that's the whole reason I took the year off. I just like was not hyped on competitive snowboarding. Like I loved snowboarding, but the whole competing and training, like I was just not happy. And then so coming back and like, being happy and like really wanting to be there was just such a win. So for that's me. an interesting thing to talk about, yeah. I think, yeah. um, because everybody goes through these ups and downs, and you know, it, it can be anything that causes you to lose that kind of love or just that excitement that mm. like really has that burning inside of you. So what was it? How how do you think you you lost it, and how'd you get it back? I have no idea how I lost it because I was actually really hyped after the Olympics. Like it wasn't as though at the Olympics finished and I was just over it. Because like, you competed in the Olympics. I was just trying to do the math in my head. Were you 18 years old? I was old? 18, yeah. And you hadn't finished school yet because you no. had to do two years on the HSE. Yeah, yeah. Holy so shit. I was doing that and then 
Um, but it wasn't the Olympics that made me, I don't know what it was. I just like had, I think it was just the fact that I was a teenager and like, I was just away. And I think, I don't know, I was just kind of going through it mentally a bit. And like, I would go up to training and I wouldn't do anything. And then I'd leave and just be so upset that I didn't do anything, but I didn't know how to like get my head around to actually try tricks. Like, it's like, I was scared. I was scared. People were going to think I was like, lame or like not good and like I was just so in my head about everything and then so I was miserable on tour I was so I think I fell at a bunch of comps because I literally just didn't want to be there Mm. well also like taking it back like your brother is your coach right yeah and I know over the years like you've made some really good friends with the girls on tour, mm-hmm. right? Maddie Maestro has mm-hmm. been an incredible friend. Like you're, you're all yeah. friends yeah. on tour. But um, especially with these last couple of years with COVID and yeah. it, like it's like if you're not a part of the US team or you're not a part yeah. of the Canadian team, you kind of can't hang out exactly. with them. So you're yeah. separated from everything, your family essentially on the road. Yeah. Did and that, that was play the a thing. part? Like – I think because it all kind of fell apart because I used to be on the Mammoth team with Ben Wisner. Yep. You shout out to him, like best coach Wisner's I've ever had. Great. Oh my god! And he was he was more than a coach for me. He was like almost like a father figure in a sense. Like he was the best. Um, but he had a third kid, and he's like, "Hey, Lee, like I'm really sorry. I'm going to take a step back from coaching." So what what year did you start working with Ben? I think 2017. So I did 2017, 2018. So was he your coach him. at the Olympics? He was. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So he was my coach at the Olympics. And then so, and that's when I was training with Maddie and all those people. Yeah. Yep. And then, so Maddie got on Red Bull. So she started training with James and Ben was finished and I kind of had nowhere to go. I had no one to coach me. So I kind of just like floated around. And I think that like had a little bit to do with as well. Like I had, I was still riding with my friends, but it wasn't the same. And like, I just, I just had no drive. Like I wanted to be better, but I almost didn't really care. Like I didn't care that I was middle of the pack. I didn't care that I wasn't winning. Like I just wanted to be snowboarding because I loved snowboarding and I knew I loved snowboarding, but I just didn't love competing. Yeah. yeah. And so actually it was, um, so I went to China that year so it would have been the 2020 winter I guess um and I went to China and I was miserable in China like I'd come home from training every day crying I was like I don't want to be here like working with the coach wasn't really working and so um the Australian team was like why don't you just like not compete for a year and I was like yeah dope like that's all I needed to hear (laughs) best (laughs) offer ever I was like I need to get out of here and then so I went to Canada with my mum and my brother and I just snowboarded did it was that you were at COP and I was at COP yeah I remember you telling me that and I'm like the pipe yeah but I just and I wanted to be around mountains I wanted to be in the pipe but I wanted to get out of America I wanted to like I just wanted to not be around the whole scene because like the scene was killing me like I just hated it so much but it was the best thing that has ever happened to me because like I love it now for the first time in years I like want to be the best I want to get better and I think I needed that break almost to grow up as well to just realize that this is actually what I want to do and like I love it so much so yeah you gain the realization that yeah yeah you've got hunger and yeah exactly and and, and you want to push it yeah you found I guess kind of a working recipe for you right yeah, like you, exactly. you, we were talking about your brother being your yeah. coach and you love it I love it yeah. he's the best he's like one of the best the best coach ever like and, and it's good. obviously friendship emotional exactly. support like kind of exactly. bit of everything and it's so good to have him there and it's it's a much it's a different dynamic because usually I'm training with like an a uh, older male whereas like it's my brother like if my brother's annoying me I can tell him to go away like I can tell him he's wrong I can like because we just have such an open relationship whereas I feel like sometimes when you're working with coaches there's that level of like hierarchy almost Mm -hmm. where it's like I can't tell this like 40 year old man to fuck off like (laughs) but I can tell my brother that and so is there a mutual respect between you and your brother that like exactly that works yeah you take your moment away from each other no love lost kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. yeah, it's good. It's really, really good and he gets it and he's really smart. So he just like, because he's not a pipe, like he's he, he's a really, really good snowboarder, but he's not a pipe rider, um, but he's really smart and he's really good at watching people and listening yeah. and learning and he loves learning <clears throat> things. And so he so quickly picked it up and like he's he's so good. 
He's and the I, best. I assume like he can break it down in a way that you can interpret. Like, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And if I don't get it, I'll just I'll be like, "What do you mean by that?" And then he's like, "Okay, like just do it." Like he he's yeah. really really good. Yeah, he's awesome. How long has he been coaching you for? Um, for the whole last winter and now, so probably I guess since January. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's working. It's working really well. It's good. Um, and he'll go away this next winter with you and be your coach at the Olympics? Yeah. He's, he's going to so be the coach at Olympics. Weird. Oh, my family's so proud of Josh for going to the Olympics. <laughs> I'm like, come on, guys. This is my what second about? Olympics. <laughs> and they're like, oh, my God, Josh, this is going to be so good for you. <laughs> You're going to walk in the opening ceremony, like all this stuff. And I have this joke that. Do the coaches get to go in the opening yeah. ceremony? Yeah. What? That's so <laughs> no, it's good. It? They're, they're, they're support crew. Of course they should have yeah. the opportunity to walk. They're they're an important <laughs> part of the, thing, the, I might, the athlete I might be team. Looking, getting into coaching. Yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> That'd be a good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I have this joke <clears throat> with my family that my brother's uniform is going to be framed before mine ever does because mine's still sitting in a bag in my room. <laughs> so we have this joke that my brother's Wait, opening so ceremony coat is going to be framed. You don't have your uniform framed in a bag. Yeah, it's just in a bag in my cupboard. And my, my parents Mom. being like, we're going to get on. it done, we're going to get it done. And then, so that's why I'm saying, I'm going to go to my second games bef- and my brother's going to have his uniform framed, framed before mine. <laughs> and my dad's just like, this is going to be such a good opportunity for you, Josh. Look, think of all the people you're meeting and all this stuff. I'm Aww. just like, I'm so proud of you, Josh. But like, come is, on, bring your attention back to me. Is, is Josh older or younger? Older. Older. How, yeah. How much older? Three years. So he's 25. 25. Yeah. It's so funny. Oh, that's pretty cool. I, I like the brother-sister duo like you yeah know, like you and benny i'm like literally that's like what happened with benny and i yeah i reckon i was 18 <laughs> at my first olympics yeah um i decided to just get schooling done i did not want to keep that going for mm-hmm. any longer than i had to but i think it was the year before my first olympics my brother started working with me and yeah. um we had we love each other yeah but yeah he didn't take me telling him to fuck off very well <laughs> I think the only reason me and my brother are friends is because we didn't really grow up together. Because oh, I yeah. was like always traveling. So I would spend like six months away from home from the ages of like 13 to like last winter. We I would only spend a couple months together a year. And so we kind of missed all those like annoying years where you hate your sibling. Yeah. Wow. So we, we like skipped that whole thing and it was straight back to us being like. And then you've realized you're actually really good friends. Yeah, we actually yeah. Like really enjoy hanging out together. Yeah. So oh, I think I that was it. the best thing almost for us is like we didn't. Did he ever try and have a crack at professional snowboarding? He did for sure until maybe he was like 16. But he's this like tall guy, like he could never really figure like it you're out. you're tall, but he's so much he's taller than so you. He's so tall, so tall. <laughs> how, how tall? And he's like six foot, like six or something. I'm six four and I haven't figured it out, so yeah. He just... Respect he, to him. And he loves it <laughs> and he's so good. He just like, he just couldn't figure out the whole like... Lower center of gravity. Exactly. I, yeah. I'm stoked I that to. you have figured out what works for you because, yeah. yeah, you just you just can't. There's no one way of doing thing that you know creates a champion or whatever. You've yeah. really got to like go through the ropes to figure how yeah. you best work and the best team to have around you. So, and I think that's something that was stressing me out a lot when I was younger was. I feel like I thought I had to be a child prodigy in mm. order to be somebody. Because if you think about Chloe and Haley and mm. Red and yeah. Brock and all these really good, and Maddie even, um, they were all super good from a young age. And I was right there with those kids and then they like broke out and I didn't quite. And then I think I was like 17, 18 and I was like, like why? Like I'm not going to make it. I wasn't a child prodigy. I wasn't winning X Games medals at 17. I like, and I'm still not. And I think it took growing up to realize like, like I think watching Scotty come into his shell in his twenties and win all these events in his like early Mm twenties made me realize that I don't have to be a child prodigy to be a pro snowboarder. Like I can still peak now Dude, and that's okay you're 22 years old i that's know nothing. but i was stressing out i was like i haven't peaked why haven't i peaked all my friends have peaked yeah. all my friends are winning gold medals and i'm not i must be shit like it's that's crazy you saying that because comparing yourself to somebody is like it robbed you yeah. of the joy in snowboarding yeah like comparison is the thief of joy yeah no matter what 
you're doing and comparing yourself to in life. So. It'd be hard as well because I guess like, you know, you are competing against yeah. a certain field of, of females and you see those males around you as well. And if you are just not hitting that next level, because like those guys, like they are freaks and you're such a talented rider, but like, yeah, that would put a lot of pressure on you. Yeah. Like my, I mean, watching my, the girls around me and the girls that I grew up with were all on the podium. And I was like just scraping in finals. Yeah. And I was like, what what would I do wrong? And then I think that had a lot to do with why I was like pretty depressed for those couple of years cause, and mm-hmm. just didn't want to be there. Because I was like, obviously, this isn't for me. I yeah. haven't made it. I'm 18 and I'm not on the podium yet. Like, this sucks. And then so I think in the last year, I've sort of been like, actually, it's all right. If I peak this year, dope. If I peak when I'm 25, dope. Like, I think I've still got so much fire in me and I've only just realized that it's okay that I haven't peaked yet oh I love that so fuck yeah uh it's funny because you know you you said you know you brought up Scotty and I can kind of relate to that time seeing that time in his career too um I remember when I was young growing up part of the mammoth team you know riding with um uh, Mason Aguri, yeah, who was it? Eric Jackson, you yeah. know, there were so many young, young rippers. Yeah. And like riding with Mason, I was, I would never have guessed that he, like, do you remember Mason Aguri at yeah. all? Yeah. Like, I would never have guessed that he could have been what he was in snowboarding when I first saw him as a young kid. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he went through his, like, kind of evolution as well. And then he was fucking ripping ripping you know? yeah, yeah exactly um so it's just like you just yeah you can never write anybody off yeah at exactly all. and it's it's okay to like not be a child prodigy i guess i think there's a benefit in it in a way like <clears throat> i mean i'm only talking from what i've seen from the outside but like i think those child prodigies and a few of them that we've seen not only in snowboarding but in action sports it's like when they peak so early mm-hmm. They burn so quickly. They burn like, out. Like when, when you go and you're 15, 16 years old and you're winning medals and you're doing all this stuff, a lot of these names that I, you know, we're hearing about five years ago, they've kind of like, yeah, they're just scraping the surface now. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I don't know, like you want it, you want to continue it for as long as possible. You, you, you want longevity. You said he loves mm-hmm, right? longevity. Yeah. yeah. You want to, I mean, there's so many different facets in snowboarding that, there are to enjoy and I and I love that you said like you don't really like competing because mm-hmm. I can relate to yeah. that my whole whole career like yeah. it was funny I just happened to be good at it but like yeah. I hated competing yeah <laughs> if I didn't have to compete I was like whoa yeah it's like I love Fully. snowboarding but I don't Do love you to hate compete. competing I love it again now but you hated it I hated yeah, it at the time but also I think I almost have to love it because if I don't compete I can't snowboard you, you can't so, you can't wake up every day going oh fuck, what do you, what crap. do you mean by that if you can't compete you can't snowboard. well I think like the only way for me to have a career at the moment in snowboarding is if I compete and I have this success through competing and then I could maybe make a career out of it in the back end and what would that look like like free free yeah, riding stuff yeah I want to ride power for a long time <laughs> <laughs> I want to do these games and then Tess I've been talking Tess Tess has gone in my head that we're both doing Italy. And then I'm going on a. I'm gonna go buy a sled and a truck, and no I'm way. just gonna go rip around. Yeah, sled next. Oh my god, I want a sled so bad. Oh, I think the, the reason I want to compete is so I have money so that I can buy all these things and do all these things I want to do. Because I just want to buy a sled, I want to buy a truck, I want to buy a house, and I just want to live in Colorado or go get Canada lost in the somewhere. mountains. Yeah, it's it seems like such the it seems it's the uh, the natural evolution of a snowboarder. You know, oh my like, god, yeah. yeah. You do um, what you got to do to get where you want to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Because it seems like so many of those guys, like I guess um, I'm a huge Danny Davis fan mm-hmm. and like watching him throughout and, you know, you're super close with him and just watching his evolution of pipe, 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 pipe. And then when he started to kind of tap out of that and now him getting into free riding, it's like you get this whole new uh danny davis you know yeah. and you, you get this whole new rider to enjoy and 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 to watch an experience and it's so cool to see him out in a new element doing his thing like yeah. so many riders yeah um, i think it's interesting when people are like i can't wait to go home i can't wait to not snowboard for a couple of months i'm like i have no idea what you're talking about i do not relate to that like you just want to snowboard i just want to snowboard or like it, I, I can understand not wanting to ride pipe for a little bit but like 
as soon as I'm home in Sydney after being away for six months, I like want to get out. You like hug the family. You're like, all yeah, right, I'm I ready. love you. This has been so good, <laughs> mom. Thank you. But I want to go snowboarding. <laughs> so there's got to be a beach girl in there too, right? Oh, yeah, there's a beach yeah? girl for sure. But I don't know. I nah, just love your snowboarding. Heart's in snowboarding. Yeah, I like I want to go live in the states. I'm like applying for the green card lottery like so good. Yeah, I want to be there and be snowboarding. And I love the beach and I love surfing and I want to be this surfer girl too, but I'm definitely I just love snowboarding and I love my friends and I always miss my friends in the states. Yeah. Yeah. So you're um you're heading over in November. Yeah. Um your brother is your coach. Mm-hmm. What what are your plans? Like there's a short couple months once you get um, to the States to, to ride and prepare for the Olympics. Like what have you got big eyes, you know, you yeah. ticking off boxes before the games? I do for sure. I have a couple of tricks that I want to get down and I think if I can get them, I could do pretty good at the games. I um, We're heading to Kistanhorn in Austria in mid-November, yep. which will be sick for like two weeks kind of that's going to be my only two weeks to be in a real 22 foot pipe and then we're straight into um the first event the copper grand prix in early december and then got a bit of a break there so i'll probably hang out in copper and then we've got mammoth grand prix in january and then lux open and then two weeks after lux open it's on we're in china wow yeah it's gonna go quick i can't believe it's already come around do you feel like you need more time now to prepare I was kind of freaking out a little bit, but then my brother sort of calmed me down. He's like, you have so much time. Like, it kind of sounds like we don't have that much time, but if you break it down for what we want to do, I think it's achievable. He was like, you just got to think of it by day by day. You can't freak out and say, oh, we've only got so many months left. Like, we can only really do what we got to do. And What's your vibe on the fact that, you know, like we've got Scotty James, we've got Valentino, we've got yourself – and mind you, you are going to be the lone female halfpipe rider. It's going to be trippy. It's kind of sad. Well, because, and especially looking <laughs> at the kids, there's at. no like little girls coming up either. And like, well, this, I'm pumped we've got Val. Like, that's sick. Yeah. yeah. But I guess, like, for you, it must be disappointing. You're from Australia. You've spent so much, you've spent so much time here. There's no halfpipe yeah. anywhere. Yeah. That must be hard. Yeah, it was hard seeing them take the half pipe off the trail map in Perisher, because like that just it's done. Do you do you feel that if I mean, you said it's sad that there's no young girls coming up. Yeah. Do you think that taking away that pipe on Front Valley is 100%, part of that? A hundred percent. Like, it's... how's any girl gonna know that they like to do it? The only reason I knew I liked it was because of that pipe in Perisher. And like, if you're a little girl. And sorry, not a little, like if you're a young shredder yeah, and you get the opportunity to go overseas, whether it's with your parents or whether it's on a development camp or something, if you've never been in a pipe before and then you're greeted with the 22 foot yeah. walls, the monster. So intimidating. You're, going, you're going, fuck that. I'm going to go hit that box yeah. and that yeah. rail and that jump. And I think, yeah, like. Because you have progressive terrain parks right yeah, like you got exactly. Leichhardt and then you got Front Valley mm. like there's a steady progression for, for slope style yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's, for pipe it's just like it's, it's like you're pulling up to the X Games Aspen course and being like all right learn it's yeah. like surfing pipeline <laughs> yeah, good luck like, kiddies yeah, good luck it's and like surfing pipeline yeah. Yeah. yeah pumping day like <laughs> yeah. no thank you and I, like we were saying is um there's even less pipes like even the 22s there's less i think there's maybe like six pipes left in the world well and now i was told Wait, that six like, pipes left in the world i reckon there's like copper um park city when it's up and mammoth you, you're actually telling me that you have to pay to ride copper yeah pipe. that's the new trend so. coming around is places are charging to ride pipe which kind of screws us over more because how How's like a 10 year old kid meant to ration to their dad? Hey dad, you just bought me a lift ticket, but now I want to ride pipe for another hundred dollars a day. Like they're just going to go ride park. Park's free. Wait, so you buy, this is in copper. Yeah. This season, you, early winter, they were charging people by the day to ride the pipe. You, you could buy, ride it for free after 2 PM when it's shadowy and dangerous, basically. So you buy a lift ticket. And run yeah. it out and then you have to buy another it's a hundred dollars yeah it was it was something crazy like that yeah 
no, not everywhere is doing that, but copper no. is. But right? copper is, and it's because they know they can because no pipes are up until January. Like they were doing this in December and they do it like when we're all there because we've all got the Copper Grand Prix coming up. So and they like, know that yeah, it's like the you, teams will pay. Yeah, they know the teams will pay. But for someone like me, like I don't have the team. a team. Like I pay my own comp fees. Like I... Like I'm like I don't have like I'm not gonna go invoice Australia like two grand because I wanted to go ride the pipe for two weeks like doesn't work like that. Wait, yeah. so it costs you two thousand dollars to ride the pipe at Copper. Well, like bucks a, a day. yeah, like it would. Hundred bucks a day. I'm, being, they, they I'm exaggerating, but no, it would no, be like a lot of money. They give you especially this, US dollars as well. Yeah. Like I think that is so far. So coming back to the grassroots kind of thing. That's insane. Yeah. That's like full ten year old or you know gouging. nine year old Emily isn't going to pay hundred bucks no way my to dad's ride the pipe. That. He would <laughs> yeah. just say go ride the jumps and then I'd and be a slope girl. Like yeah. they're like oh why are there no slope uh, pipe kids coming up? It's like well first of all there's no pipes and second of all you're charging them to ride it. Yeah. Like how's it's, anyone meant to? Th- it's, so it's a different right. So if we compare it to my. Uh, I think it was my second Olympics in third, third Olympics in Russia. Yeah. There was a full halfpipe team. Every allotted spot, four spots for the female yeah. halfpipe team was filled. Yeah. To now Emily being the only one. Yeah. So, and now we've so got no halfpipe on front valley. Uh, myself, Holly Crawford, Hannah Trigger, and. Steph, right? And. Oh, is that Sochi? Uh, Who's the <laughs> what? What year are you talking about? I'm Russia. in my brain. Soch- I think it was. So- I think it was Sochi. Yeah. Yeah. Hannah yeah, yeah. and Steph. And yeah. Steph. Mad- yeah. Majuros. Majuros. Yeah. 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 So there was and there was two girls that didn't make it. Amber and Alex were going for it that year true. too. There were six of you going for the spot. Yeah. And now we've got no pipe on Front Valley, so no grassroots like initiation. Yeah. We've got lots of rad treaders, like yeah, young girls for sure. um, here in Australia. But yeah, now. How many girls competed in Pyeongchang with you? Me and Holly. You and Holly? Yeah, just us two. And then what happened to Holly? Holly's just. Holly retired. Holly's retired. retired. Yeah. 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 Holly, Holly's first Olympics was 2006 with me, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think anyone competed in 2002. Okay. So Holly did four yeah. games. Well, that's a problem. Yeah. That's a huge problem. Yeah, yeah. And, do yeah, you, it's like, a shame. Do you see, like, are there any other girls that you know of that are Australian that are wanting to ride pipe or pursue it? Well, I don't even know if, well, little Chelsea Kelly used to do a bit of pipe because that, she's competed in overseas in pipe. But, um like, I'm sure the girls would love to ride it, but they, I think they almost don't know how to because they never got to. Or, like, what's the whole uh, foresight and plan? You know, it sounds like you guys... I don't think there is a plan, really. No. There's the development place teams in place, but, yeah. like, I don't think there is a plan. And no. you know what? It's not Emily's job to think about <laughs> it right now because she is yeah. thinking about the Olympics in yeah. China. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just, I, I just think it's fucked. But, it, but it's interesting looking at, yeah. like, now history of, yeah. of what Australia has provided. And the girls are still there. They're just going to yeah. be in slope style. They're just going to be in slope, which yeah. is cool too. Like, that's sick. We haven't really had a massive slope team until Tess, yeah. really. So, like, that's cool too. That's, that's true. Just riding yeah. slope. Like, in Sochi, where first Olympics for slope style, there was myself and um, I forgot you competed in slope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Did. <laughs> um, Who else was? Was there anyone? Oh, um, Jess. Wise and no, Jess. No, she was she wasn't there. Cool. I mean, my brain it doesn't work well sometimes. So I'm trying to think if there was another female I don't slope think star there rider was. In, from Oz. In Sochi? No. Do we need to bring up the Google? Yeah, I was going to say it's pretty dog if we don't. <laughs> but then coming the, I mean, gosh, if there was another female slope star rider, I'm so sorry. I'm don't so worry, sorry. I've, um, I've, I've, but I've copped some heat over these episodes. <laughs> you just, you My just, you gotta, you gotta so give bad. us a little bit of grace. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> but, I was 10. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but then coming into the next Olympics in Pyeongchang, there was Jess Rich and yeah. Tess. Yeah. yeah. So... Yeah. Two more girls. Yeah. Um, and coming into these Olympics for slope style, there's Tess. Tess, Tess. is now yeah. retired. Just Tess. Just Tess in these and ones. So it's just Tess and it's just you. 
Yeah, I think and so. And mind you, the COVID years have made it very, very, very hard. Because yeah. no one can travel. The only reason we were able to go overseas is because we got big exemptions. Yeah. Like if you weren't on the Australian team, you weren't going overseas. Yeah. yeah. So that kind of hurt a bit of the younger girls and boys. So where's yeah. your like... And a chance to qualify, really. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Where is your head at heading into, you know, like Olympics is uh, just over five months away. Yeah. It's in February what are you i mean like what are you doing in terms of preparing for that because you know like you say like you've kind of got your flame back your competitive flame back and whatnot is there a lot that goes on in the background with like training i know you're heading overseas soon Mm -hmm. like what's your what's your approach what's your game plan um we've been doing heaps of off snow training like me and tess do tramp every day yeah and we're in the gym every morning so a lot of we've been hammering S and C blocks, which has actually been really good because I S&C? sorry that? strength and conditioning. I got my <laughs> jock like, lingo going. I'm like, um, I don't know what that means. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I'm yeah, just gonna like have another do, drink of my hard fist. Yeah, <laughs> we do have big S and C blocks. Talk, you know? Yeah, yeah athlete. I'm sorry. S and C. Um, but yeah, so those have been really good because I think over the last two years is when I've started taking that stuff really seriously as well. And it was really cool going over to Lark's last winter and actually seeing the results come from the gym. It changes your whole mindset too when you're like putting in the time and the effort and seeing, I guess, your strength level. Like everything becomes a bit easier. Then you take it to snow and you're like, oh. And there's that dumb stigma about like it's lame to go to the gym. Like that's so dumb. Like, well, like I think it's not I, lame I, to be want to be better. I think that's like a, a t- it. That was a thing two years ago. Yeah, two and years ago. I'm like, I that was a thing in the out. '90s, man. <laughs> Just yeah. more drugs and <laughs> more shredding. That's all you need. I'm, I'm, I'm only I'm, about it. I'm only coming out of that phase now. But <laughs> yeah, I'm all about it. Like, I'm, I think it's sick. I, like, there's I'm nothing lame about, about wanting to be better. And like, I was watching this ASAP Rocky interview, and he's like, "Since when is it lame to want to be good at something? Like, it's not lame it's to not. try." And I think that's something a lot of people need to get over. But Wait, does talk- ASAP Rocky do S&C? I hope so. I don't think he does the S&C. Thing is, but even he if- says it's lame <laughs> to think that it's lame to try. So I like I just take that I like from ASAP. It. Even if you're not an athlete, how much better do you feel when oh you get God. your heart pumping and breathing fresh air? Like it's literally sick. your blood vessels just going yeah. boom. Like it... <clears throat> it you get high from it. I was talking to You're Tess happier. Cody about it and she was she, – people be like, oh, what are you doing in your spare time? And she says she doesn't do anything because she didn't want to tell people that she loves going to the gym. And I'm like, no, that's I've... so dumb, Tess. Like, that's sick that you lift super heavy in the gym. Like, that's so cool. And, like, you're trying so hard to be the best at your sport and look how fit and strong and healthy you are. Like, yeah, tell look how people you go to the gym every day. Are. Do you think like, that your like, snowboarding has gotten better since – conditioning your body in a way where it's like i don't know like the, the the way that i'm seeing it now and we've spoken about this on a few podcasts with with like val and scotty and stuff it's like yeah you're no longer a snowboarder when you get to that level yeah like you're an athlete yeah and i i don't know in my mind it's like the more thaw you are like the more the more super- <laughs> and i was like oh, i <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just a Chris, I like Hems- it. Chris I like Hemsworth it. reference. Yeah, he's buff. Oh, sorry, I forgot your besties with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shout out, Chris. Um, we no, like the more superhuman you are, yeah. The the stronger you are, uh, the more cardio you have, like yeah. everything that goes into that. Surely that relates to being a better snowboarder. Yeah. Well, if anything, you can just spend so much more time on hill because you're yeah. not tired. Like I was riding from, I was riding four hours straight, lapping that Lark's T-bar. I wouldn't take a break. I probably was getting in like 50 laps a day. You're conditioned. Exactly. Yeah. I was strength and conditioned and I was ready to go and I wasn't tired and I could get up and go the next day. I yeah. could ride five days in a row. And that, so it's not even almost if it makes my snowboarding better, but it just gives me the opportunity to be on snow for longer, yep. which makes me and, better at snowboarding. And injury, you like, like exactly the, yeah. the, the like inevitable that. falls don't, you know, you bounce back from them a yeah, little bit more. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's also, I think, um, you don't want to bulk too much. Like, you don't want to become Thor because it takes away from, like, that agility. But it is, like, yeah, you yeah. need 
yeah, you're but just, there's that you're, super you're human element, it's, you know, like, it's like yeah, your sure. functional fitness. Like, yeah. are you training for what you have to do in the pipe? Yeah, or that definitely. like quick like rotations and yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's all like applied strength and conditioning, yeah, right? Definitely. Like, yeah. I had this chat with uh, my trainer the other day. She keeps having me do oblique things, and I was like, Janina, you're gonna make me wide. I don't want to be a wide person. And she's like, Emily, you spin. This is your sport. Like, you need to be strong in your core. She's like, I don't care about what your body looks like you need to be a good snowboard and I was like okay fair enough the thing is Fine. <laughs> strong is sexy yeah no matter what yeah. it looks like so embrace it girlfriend yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah no so definitely we've been doing lots of SNC to get ready for the games and um lack a lot of so sorry to jump in here yeah. but no half pipe in Australia no this half year, pipe right? I've been doing like, any pipe training <laughs> so ironically. if there was one the smaller transition actually would have been beneficial. It, yeah. It would have helped, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Even just for like, like you can do so many little flippy things in a mini pipe. Yeah. Like I can't spin tens in an 18, but I can learn a bunch of different flips and I can learn, I can do a like bunch of different switch. rotations. I could too, learn a yeah. bunch of like different cool grabs. Like there's always something you can yeah. work on. It doesn't have to be big tens in a big pipe. Like it's and, all going to make me better. But you've been riding slope style. Yeah, been riding slope. But like I was saying before, it's so hard. It was kind of hard for me to get motivated. And I it, I was pretty bummed because everything would be like, oh, we're not going to have this because they were meant to have that pipe up in Threadbo, the 22. And yeah. it was like, that's not happening anymore. And I was like, that's okay. I'm going to go to New Zealand. And they're like, oh, well, you know, the pipe in New Zealand is not going to be up till September. And I was like, that's okay. I'll go in September. That's going to be great. And then they're like, oh, no, you can't actually go at all now. And I was like, okay, cool. Like it was just like hit after hit after yeah. hit. And I was just sort of like trying so hard to stay positive. Like I'm going to have this awesome like progression going into the games and it was just like every opportunity was getting cut shorter and shorter and yeah. shorter and now I'm going to get two weeks in Austria when, where yeah. I was looking at three months. Do you visualize? Yes I do not How as much as I wanted to and I need to work on it more because sometimes I visualize falling and that's I don't like doing that. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't mean I, to. I can but just relate like, to that. Like yeah. sometimes, like, <laughs> and then that's I thought like when that would happen to me, or if I'd mess up in the air, I would think it was just my body not having that understanding yeah. yet. But yeah. the better, the more get, time you spend, exactly, the better you, you get. get. Better at it, yeah. and um, you know, like when Mark Morris had that hectic like um injury whole thing he like said he was visualizing every single day and when he got back on snow he was better than when before he had his injury because every so day crazy he was just lying on the lounge imagining mm -hmm. tricks all so day crazy and it's like i know like to me i find it quite boring but i have to remind myself like if you want to be the it's best a skill you, yeah exactly and it, yeah you yeah. gotta give time you gotta to do it because if i can trick my brain into thinking i've done a trick 10 times every day when i go to do it i'm not going to be scared of it and i'm probably going to be able to figure it out once i get on snow so yeah yeah um i reckon if i could have changed anything about my career it's that i would have talked to myself with more confidence like yeah. i would have told myself that i was great yeah because the the way you speak to yourself the moment you wake up is how you set yourself up for the day. And yeah. I definitely went into winters where I was like, oh, like already doubtful going, I haven't had enough time to prepare. I've only got two weeks before yeah. this first event where it's like, no, no, no. Yeah. And I'm like, just that's coming to mind when you're saying like, I've just had hit after hit after hit thinking yeah. I'm going to be able to ride a pipe. And, and, you know, then nope, nope, nope. Yeah. And now you're going in November and that's going to be the first time you've ridden a pipe since yeah. last yeah. yeah right or yeah. earlier this winter I yeah, guess earlier. uh northern winter yeah yeah so I was just like just tell yourself yeah. that it's your freaking kick ass and that you've already like learnt these tricks in your head so it's gonna yeah translate so easily once you get on snow and blah 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 like that's how I think you can yeah just exactly and once I think you're on snow you're on fire then in the last year I've learnt that and how much it helps to just be like just tell yourself that you're sick and tell yourself that you can do anything and that you're gonna do it and you're gonna be great because like like I was saying back then I don't want to keep honing on it but when I was bummed I was like you're shit like why are you here like if you're yeah. not gonna do anything just go home can you imagine if you told your friend that stuff like 
Literally, yeah, like you if wouldn't I said have to a Maddie, like, you're shit. Yeah. Why are you here? You're like not even landing anything. And that's what I was telling myself. <laughs> you're I like, was your like, friend would get the hell out yeah, of it. <laughs> exactly. So like, yeah, so it definitely has a huge impact on how you feel about yourself in your writing. Yeah, and no, totally. It totally comes through and like just being confident changes everything yeah because you just trick yourself into thinking you are the best and then and you like, become fake the best. it till you exactly. make it yeah. <laughs> yeah and having fun yeah having fun is so important but literally if you can you imagine how much fun you'd have if you woke up every morning and gave yourself a pep talk in the mirror yeah <laughs> i've actually <laughs> you're doing it i've actually been doing it since valentino told us yes. what he does yeah it's just like, he does what? this psycho ch- chant in the mirror yeah like, literally i I no, like to do good. that after my competitive career yeah. actually ended because and and it like you don't need to be an athlete to do it. Just an everyday person doing everyday yeah. things and it changes everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah, at the end of the day you can wake up and you can have negative thoughts, you can yeah. wake up and you can have positive thoughts and like you're saying like manifesting and visualizing. Mm-hmm. It's like if you're not doing that, there's way less chance of you being able to actually achieve it. Yeah. So it's like doing it's a, everything you can to put yourself in the position to do it is by far the smartest thing to do. Yeah. So sound, sure. It sounds like you're uh, Leave no stone unturned, yeah, Emily. Yeah, totally. <laughs> With going on that and talking about, you know, the visualizing and, and the training and everything, uh, you know, we were chatting a little bit earlier um, about, you know, you don't have a lot of support in terms of you're, you're not – with the Olympic Winter Institute, is that right? No, not anymore, no. You got dropped? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why did you get dropped? I um, I didn't reach the quota. I got 10th and I needed to get 8th, so I didn't make the team. Do did, did you know how much the point difference was? It was only a couple points and, <laughs> yeah. it was, And it sucks because it was a comp where I felt I got judged badly and so that, that was kind of frustrating. Oh, my God. But, um, so is there no... It's by the rule. There's no yeah. like, hey, you're our only hope. <laughs> but the thing Wait. is, is I understand. Hey, you're the only female half heart yeah. rider left in Australia. Yeah. It's a bit like that. Are you that, fucking kidding me? But it's hard. It's hard because I understand the rules. It's like you got rules. I didn't make the cut. Fine. All good. I'm so happy with that. But um, it just sucks that there's no middle ground. Like, I don't need 50 grand, but like five would be sick. Yeah. 10 would be dope. Like yeah. two would be, that's my flight somewhere. Yeah. Like it's, it just sucks that there's either this massive chunk of money or there's nothing and there's nothing for those people that aren't quite those like in like getting that result. Cause so. that, yeah. Cause that, I guess that's what we were talking about offline, uh, which was, you know, there's obviously a pool of riders that, are on this Olympic Winter Institute yeah. and they have the support. Yeah. They get funding. They can yeah. travel. They can get coaches. They can do all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but it is channeled into only a few. Yeah. And it just seems a little bit counterproductive when you think about if you're trying to bring up that next generation yeah. and pedestal them or like push you to get to that next level. Yeah. Well, I think just what... Just dropping you just sounds... What, what, Stupid. what I think they, this, it's hard, right? Like we could sit yeah. here and solve all the problems, yeah. but this That's bureaucrat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But like what, what this formula that they have and it's very bureaucratic, you know, you've got to yeah. dot the T's, cross the I's. What that doesn't take into equation is what that little bit of support means to an athlete. Yeah. yeah. Like it's for me coming into the 2010 Olympics, like I, I didn't think I was going to be going. I, I was like on my back dead, you know, yeah. and I had my issues <laughs> with yeah. the Institute. Um, but the fact that they gave me the honor of carrying the flag yeah, was what I needed yeah. um, as support. I like, yeah. that's what I needed at that moment. And what this just, doesn't do it it doesn't there's no energetic support to the athletes it's like it's cut 
dry or cold. Whereas, like, if there was some middle ground, yeah, can you imagine, like, Sounds you would have like, been yeah. like, oh, they are finding a way to support me. I yeah, am the no, only totally. female snowboarder, like the half pipe shit. rider. And, yeah. <laughs> and that was Do the shit like, thing is it's like I don't want to shit talk them because they're actually really good to yeah, their yeah, athletes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they're an amazing institute and they have you have so much support when you're on them. A lot has changed. A lot has changed. I, the past I know years, from yeah. when you were with and, them. But, like, when I was on them, they were sick. Like, so helpful. Like, my sports psychologist, I still have access to her, thank God. She's awesome and, like, all that. But it sucked being, like, kind of cut from the team. And now I genuinely feel like I'm almost, like, like the, the I'm, I'm Cinderella. Yeah. yeah. No, a bit. It's sort of like... Wait, what's Cinderella? Like, you know, like... Don't you know. don't know the story? <laughs> like how Cinderella, like, has to glass. clean the glass. fireplace and she has to do... Every, like, it was a bit like I was like, they really liked me. You're, and I was this you're good the ugly little, sister. Yeah, a little bit. It's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, Emily's Emily's just on n So, you know, like, all the OWI athletes have this and I'm not. And, like, I... like. But, yet you're still so, going to the Olympics. And, like, there's the and... OWIA physio, but I'm on n I can still use the physio, but it just... I almost feel like I can getting talked down to because I'm just an N Swiss athlete and I'm not an OWI athlete. But you're athlete. going to the Olympics. I know, and it's so frustrating because I have better results than some of the people who are on OWIA. And I'm like, they're like, oh, like they paid for my flight home from here. And I was like, but I got a better result at that event, but I had to pay for my flights home. So for the, or sorry. Oh, uh, I was going to say, so it really is where it's like, even if it is like, two thousand dollars for a flight like that kind of would be everything as far as like support exactly and like i want to say again like they're a sick institute but it just sucks that they that it's almost like you're fully funded or you're nothing Mm. and it would be awesome if there was like a middle ground where you get like five grand like a government grant almost because you're you're that shoulder like right yeah you're you're so close it's not like you're coming 15th yeah like uh, so i was about to say 50th it's not like you're last in the pack judge judge someone better yeah there's got to be some sort of discretion like not hot and cold because now essentially you're funding your program to the olympics you sign the 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 winter olympic institute contract for the two weeks that you're going to be there for the olympics and then say say you do get a medal yeah then they get the funding from your medal and you're not even guaranteed to be that funding and that yeah (laughs) yeah it's hard It's, it's interesting i'm almost trying to flip it and just be like just if you, if I just go and I'm so good, then nobody can tell me I don't deserve anything. Like I just need to work so hard yeah. that I'm so good that there's no way they couldn't offer me a contract is next this, year. Is this a little bit of like fuel to your fire? Yeah, a little a, bit. A, I just want to prove that I can do it. Yeah, it's not a yeah. fuck you, but it's like yeah. a hey. Well, you. it sounds like you want it for yourself. I do, yeah. Like first and foremost. Yes. And then you just want to have that little <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but like, what do you mean? I was like, look at what I did, yeah. and I did it on my own, and I did it because I wanted to be here and I wanted to do it. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of how I'm trying to flip it, and you know, like, yeah, nothing against them because I didn't get the result. That's fine. That's that's well, in paper. Of, of course not, too. Like, it's just it's it's that's, life. that's the bureaucratic and part of it with government funding exactly, and whatnot. But, exactly. And at the yeah. end of the day, they're a business as well. They need yeah. to make the numbers work and. Yeah. All that stuff, and we had amazing results. A bunch of people had great results overseas, so they get I, the funding. I guess it's, with yeah. me sharing the stories, it's just kind of like you're more than a number on a spreadsheet. An athlete is yeah. more than a number on a spreadsheet. Like there is this emotional side, and yeah. no matter what, an athlete needs to feel like they are supported, yeah. whether it's, you know, your own team you put in place or the team you're a part of. Yeah. Um, so it's like, and it's all, it's all just as important as the time you're putting on snow shredding. Yeah, yeah so, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> well, I think you're doing an amazing job. Thank you. And the <laughs> fact that you... I don't know. I, I reckon it's a rad story. Like, I reckon it's more like, I think, if anything, it's like fuel to the fire. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what, I don't know, I think a lot of people can, you can use that to your power. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely trying to flip it. It's my new thing is I'm trying to make everything... Just flip it into something that's gonna make me better, or yeah, yeah. Because um, I'm sick of just being like it's the world against Emily. Because be- become the queen <laughs> of reframing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because spin it. 
yeah, you can complain all you want, but it doesn't really change anything. So I might as well flip it around and use it. Totally. To fire me. Yeah. yeah. And then Emily, like what does, uh, like what's Emily Arthur's snowboarding look like post Olympics? I mean, like you're still only uh, 20. Sled, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted, that's, Gone sledding. That's what I wanted to get into. Like you're only 22. Yeah. This would be your second Olympics. Yeah. Do you think you would give uh, another four years at competing in halfpipe to make the next one? I think so. Yeah. Because I think, like we were saying before, I don't think I've reached my peak yet. Yeah. And I want to keep going. Like it, like last year, I was like, there's no way I'm doing doubles. I'm not going to do, do a double in the pipe. Yep. But now I'm like, I want to do a double. Like, let's cool. do it. Let's go. Let's do awesome. doubles in the pipe. Let's have these in our comps. Like, um, Can you say what double you'd go for first? What's So I want to, because pay heritage to Mitchy Brown. I want to do a dub backy to switch. Yeah. Because that's right. the dub he used to do. And yeah, it's the one Ben Ferg did at the last games. Yeah. Which is dope. I think it'd be dope. And I think, I, so last, I think I'd be the first girl the if last, I could get it. On the last hit? On the last hit. Yeah, I remember that. That yeah. was sick. Yeah, I think it would be dope. I, I think it'd be hard, but I think it'd be really, really cool. And I think, yeah, it could push the sport a little bit. And I just want to be the first girl to do something. So yes. might as well make it that. You can do it. Yeah. Are you doing dubs on the tramp? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I want to get in a bag. I, I mean, it's definitely not going to be at this games, but um, to be at honest, some point, like it's literally just getting the right access on yeah. the on the vert off yeah, the wall. Yeah, fully. That's what I struggled with with dubs was like I was doing dub crip, but like I just didn't have the right access to come back in yeah. like straight. So yeah. I'm just kind of like the dub the dub back to switch. It's yeah. like you actually just. You literally just go just straight go over. Straight you don't over. have to worry about yeah. like the right tilt of the shoulder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so Do I think, it. Yeah, I really want to. And it, so it's Good cool. Good on you. That's sick. Yeah, and I was talking to Tess. I was like, I don't know if I can keep up with these girls, man. Like, they're all going to be so good. And Tess is like, nah, you'll be young. Like, you'll be fine. Just go for, go for another four. Age so. is just another number, baby. Yeah, so I think I yeah. definitely have – <laughs> I want to do more with my career – um, and then so, yeah, I, and it rolls around so fast. Like it sounds like it's so far away, but it's really not. It comes so quick. Yeah, it's quick. So I think I definitely want to go to Italy and then, but in the meantime, I want to go shred. I want to go, like, I want to win some money so that I can buy a sled and a truck and so drive good. around and so, do yeah. some power ha- trips. Have you got like, is free riding something that you're interested in? Yeah, a hundred percent. I want to get better at it. I want to, I think it'd be awesome to get in the back country. Well, and- just from the few trips we've done together, like I can see that like you're actually, you're, <laughs> everything's like working out for you. Oh, that means so much. Yeah. <laughs> so one of, yeah. one of the best shots from our, uh, our shooting the other day was you just freaking heelside like bang just <laughs> it was amazing i was blown away <laughs> by your performance at the bank slalom uh, oh yeah we <laughs> haven't yeah. even talked about that maybe yeah. i'll start training some Trans- water cross bank slalom winner <laughs> yeah. 2021 day best f- day of the season you fucking smoked everyone <laughs> oh i was only a little bit ahead of no nah, but when you weigh up your time amongst all the mail, like you, yeah, that was. I, I never I looked at the was, time. I think what? that was the quickest female run, like in terms of where you stacked up against males. Mm-hmm. That was the quickest one. I was, I was blown away. Wait, wait, wait. She was the quickest one in the males. No, no. God, no. <laughs> I mean, I was like, I was the historic, quickest chick historically. Oh, where, you where were, the, where you the, were like, we're eighth in the whole category. No, it was or more something. than eighth. Really? Yeah. Damn. There we go. That's solid. On the history of the bank slalom. Woohoo. Fastest female shredder in the males. I'm just hyped that maybe I can go do Baker, right? Well, you've she's got an entry. You got an entry. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that until Tori told me. I know. What do you mean? I called you up on stage. Yeah. (laughs) She was she was too pumped celebrating. She didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. (laughs) Because I was all the way at the back because there was that huge crowd right at the front. We're not talking about the crowd. Oh, sorry. No, 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 I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> but, um, yeah. yeah so, and then Tora told me and I was like, no way, that's sick. So, yeah, definitely have to put out some time next winter yeah, to you, get up there. You and Valentino won an entry to the Bank yeah. of Bank Silence. So which if is I like- remember, I think it 
I have to look at the date at my. I have a feeling it's the Olympics. in February. It is. Yeah. No, but you Maybe can roll it pushed. over to the next year. Oh, oh that's there good. we go. Yeah. Definitely do that then. So um, I have you some could hold it down. Duct tape. Yeah. You get the, you what you get at the yeah. Bang Bang Slam is duct tape. Cool. That's what you win. <laughs> and uh, I reckon it's up there. Uh, that's like oh one God, of yeah. my Dude, like that most respected. Best best score I got third, ever. and it's still one of yeah. I'm like I got some duct tape. Yeah. I would love that because then people will think I'm cool. <laughs> They'll Emily, be like, oh, my Emily, God, Emily. do you not – I think you're cool. I just think my core I mean, score isn't very high. I mean, mine your isn't. Your what? My I'm core not. score. Like my – Like your clout? <laughs> yeah, well, against, like, the cool snowboarders. I'm saying But, but I'm saying see, clout. I think that's clout. pretty cool. That Drake in a way. his new album. <laughs> clout. Clout. Clout, mm. yeah. I, I rate you. The oh, more The more time you. we spend together – the the cooler I think you are because you don't play into that cool game and I think that's cool. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I Even though cool like too. you are cool, I don't know. <laughs> the lingo you teach me over the years, I'm like, fuck, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what does that mean? Yeah, you just got to start saying what? clout. Clout. Yeah. But clout is what my mum says. <laughs> so I thought I clout like... was new. No. Nah, clout's old school, oh. man. I, I think... Uh, I researched it on Urban Dictionary. Clout is like, um, like you got clout. Like yeah, like in social media, it's like if you're a somebody, you got clout. You got Instagram yeah. clout. Yeah. yeah. So no, it's an old I've, one. I I have no clout. Just resurfaced. Oh, <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, so um, you should definitely go do the Banker Bank slalom. Yeah. And you should like I'm excited. That's to the see, best event I've ever done. You know. So for fun. someone to ride that course, like the Transfer Bank Slalom course, and to get the time that you did, there's obviously this insane level of board control, which, you know, I, which I can Jeez. see in Torah. snowboards. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're a pipe rider. Yeah. And watching pipe riders transition into free riding and the backcountry yeah. is like... You know, it's a, it's, riding, it's, it's a match made in heaven. It's like coffee and cigarettes. Like they just, they go perfectly together. Pipe riding is all about edge control. Yeah. And if you don't know how to control and ride your snowboard, you literally can't ride transition. Yeah. So yeah. like you take someone to do the slope style course and you don't have to have great board control to ride slope style, but you sure as hell can't ride pipe and do much if you, yeah. <laughs> you don't. So. <laughs> It's yeah, yeah. so technical. It's wild. I think yeah. I'm going to be like learning techniques the rest of my life in the pipe. Well, each pipe is different exactly. too. So you have to. Yeah. yeah. It's just something that. It's kind of like reading learning. a wave in a yeah. sense. Like yeah. you got to know whether to go straight a line, have the line go down. Yeah. Like it's all just yeah. constantly yeah. changing. Oh, that's cool. So are you going to buy the sled again to free riding in this next four years? Or are you going to wait and then do it afterwards? I think I want to do it sooner rather Soon. than later. I because I like go ride power. Yeah, love it. Want to do it every winter. Like, will will you finish the events after the Olympics? Like, will you finish out the competitive year, or are you just like Olympics done? I'm buying a sled. Got, let's go ride power. I think we've only got the burn open if they do it. I heard mm. they might be doing something different this year, but if they do that, I think that's the only event after. So you got okay. Grand Prix the US in the open. lead up. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then games, and then it would just be the open for me. So, yeah, I'm just going to go rip around. I have this big – me and Tess have this big plan for after the games. Like yes. we're going to go live in Park City for a bit, and then we're going to go to Mammoth, and then we've got to reset our visas. So we're going to go on, on a surf trip to Nicaragua for 10 days oh to reset our what? US visas I, and then I go back. I got an amazing surf guide down there if you need one. Yeah. We do. Seriously, I'm Good. so excited. And then she actually won a Club Med stay oh, last year. So yes. we're going to go to the Maldives together and stay at Club Med. Oh, my gosh. Like, we've just got this big, like, six-month what? vacation. Like, we're just going to go shred. So you and, and Tess, you are the best of friends. She's my ride or die. Yeah. We, are, we were having drinks the other night. And, like, you know when, when chicks start having some drinks, like, you're my best friend. Oh, you're my you. best friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're we're doing amazing. that whole thing the other night. And we're like, I was planning my bridal party. I was like, you're going to be one of my bridesmaids. Tell oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, oh, I love I that go wait. to bits. When and did that so, friendship start? Did you know each other before we've snowboarding? We've known each other, not before snowboarding. I think she, I would have been like 17, so she would have been 16. Yeah. And then we weren't that close until maybe like 
the games, I yeah. guess. Or the year before the games, we lived together in Mammoth and that's when we got really close and then yeah. the games. And then we kind of hadn't really spent that much time together post the games because she was in Europe and I was in America. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, we've been living together all this winter and it's just, we just get along like a house on fire. It's, it's insane. so funny. That's we just cool. laugh and joke, like our sense of humor is the same and like, yeah, she's sick. And we balance each other out because I'm pretty girly and she's just polar opposite. Like she's <laughs> so cool and I'm just like this super girly chick. Like I wear tennis skirts to the gym and she's wearing baggy basketball shorts and big shirts and like it's, so it's the best. Funny. It's the best. She's so <laughs> rad. I have every second of the day for her. Oh, you yeah. guys make me wish I was like I was still doing it. Yeah. Because I'm like, yeah, this this kind of – I mean, we had some great crew, but, like, yeah. you and Tess yeah. just are so much joy and so much fun. You're more than welcome to join. <laughs> yeah. Come <laughs> join. Yeah. We've come back to got room. Uh, come back. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, man. No, <laughs> I, I just want to go ride the pipe and do straighters. That's, yeah. I haven't ridden pipe for, I don't know, a few years. Really? Yeah. Yeah. 2018 was probably the last time I rode pipe. I'm, I, I miss it, but I don't. But like, but just doing I get so much joy watching you guys. Like just big straight airs. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah. I was like all that, like, actually I would love to get back in the pipe and just do like big lofty air to fakey to yeah. cab seven. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Do and it. I'd be like, <laughs> done. Do it. You gotta. <laughs> I'm going to go brag to my baby now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then you would get Instagram clout for sure <laughs> from that. <laughs> um, so you have done one Olympics. Yeah. You had Pyeongchang under your belt. What did you learn from that Olympics that you're like so happy that you had that experience going into this one now where you're like, where you're ready, you're prepared, you want to give it your all? Yeah. I'm so glad I had that. And even going to YOG in 2016, like Youth Olympics, I kind Yog. of, yes. <laughs> I'm like, Again, Youth Olympic what is that? Games. <laughs> Youth Olympic That's Games. Okay. Um, so doing that was cool because I kind of got the bit of a taste of the Olympic kind of what it's a bit of like and then so I wasn't too freaked out going to Pyeongchang and something that like I mean the Olympics is just so hyped and it's really just a glorified World Cup almost yep yeah with with just security (laughs) guards it's a it's a World Cup security guards guards. and the whole of the Australian media team and the whole whole country cares about you for a couple weeks is kind of the the Olympics yeah you're like water cooler chat for three weeks in the office yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) which I think is really special and it's so important for our our sport you know people love to hate on the Olympics but it's so important to get people involved in the industry and like well the the industry the snowboard industry is kind of divided right some people love it some people hate it but yeah. don't hate the player because yeah. I just I just yeah. think yeah I mean we had a great chat um with a few people and I think you know the takeaways are that if it is being televised to Australia and, and to other countries it just needs to be commentated and depicted in a way that this is what snowboarding is yeah. you know like just because old mates doing twirly birds in the air and he's not mm. coming down yet <laughs> doesn't mean that that is the the end goal like yeah there's so much more to it and yeah well i think what i loved about coming home and you know hearing people's you know talk about the olympics to me is that the olympics really does every every age resonates with the olympics mm-hmm. like you had grandmas coming up to me and talking to me about oh the half pipe and the tricks yeah. i did yeah i was like whoa like that's cool yeah that the Olympics literally brings old grandmas to yeah. the sport of snowboarding. <laughs> for sure. So, no, it's so important for yeah. our sport especially. But, but was there an overwhelming um, part of Pyeongchang for you, like, that you didn't expect? Um, not really. I think China's going to be a whole different ball game. I yeah. think China with COVID, it's going to be so much stricter than what Pyeongchang was. And I think... How stoked are you that you got an Olympics in without all this oh my crazy God. regulation? I'm so happy. Yeah. Did you live it up? Be the same. Like, oh, yeah. Tell us. Yeah. Tell us I, when you lived up. <laughs> it's kind of bad because, like, when people ask me about the Olympics, I forget that I competed and I just talk about the two weeks of partying that went straight after it. <laughs> yeah. Like, the, don't get me wrong, the snowboarding was sick. The pipe was dope. I had the best so time. when was your event? Was it early on? Super early. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think I was, like, the first week. Yeah, cool. So then after that, we were just like party, going ice hockey games and going out was basically my whole week after that. Wait, so uh, did like all the Olympians get on it? 
Yeah. Pretty hard. Well, at least Park <laughs> yeah. and Pipe did. Like, I can't I can't really talk for So many did you o- meet many other athletes or did you just kind of hang with your crew? Kind of just sort of hung with my yeah. crew a little bit. I definitely mingled with the Australian athletes, but yeah. not really too much other people. But we had this one guy on the Australian team that, like, he was right at the start and he got knocked out first round and he drank every single day of the whole 14-day games. <laughs> he had to do a liver he cleanse afterwards. To, he, he was, like, on a mission to drink every single night of the games and he nailed it. But, um... Yeah, it was that so S&C, fun. That man. The Shout S&C. out to that guy. <laughs> yeah, that guy killed it. But, um, I mean, like... <laughs> Fucking, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. But, um, no, it was dope. It was so much fun. Like, and I like places that force all of us to hang out. Like, yeah. when we yeah. go... When we went to Korea for, like, the test events, we're all in the one hotel. So, like, everyone hangs out. Whereas sometimes when we're, like, staying in Copper, for example, everyone's in Silverthorne or Frisco and blah, blah. Yep. So we don't all hang out. But I like going to World Cups and the Olympics where everyone... We're all in the same hotel. Yeah, we're all in the same yeah. hotel. So we're all hanging out all the time. And that's the best. Because, I don't know, they're, like, my best friends. Like, I love yeah. hanging out with all of them. And, yeah. Some of my best holiday. memories are from that, like, yeah, at some of these World Cup events. It's pretty fun. It's so fun. Cool. You get up to a lot of mischief. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys get to go out at your games? Um, yes. Uh, let's see. For me, 2006, I think I got in and got out. I don't yeah. know what it was. I was like, fuck this. I'm going to go win every event now. Yeah. I got fourth or fifth or 10th oh, okay. or I don't know what it was. And I, I didn't do opening ceremony because we were too far away. Yeah. And we were one of the first events. And then, yeah, I was just kind of like, oh, well. I'm out. I'm out. I'm going to yeah. go make sure I win every other event. Um, and then 2010, I was stayed really low, injured, like, and then, you know, got the training days underway and yeah. then I, I won. <laughs> Legend. <laughs> and then it was just, like, crazy. Yeah. Just press, yeah, press, true. press, press, press. Yeah. What about the mischief that you were talking about? Oh, these are at the World Cups back in the day, man. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. But um, so I really didn't feel like I got that until Russia. Yeah. Um, and Russia, I was so busy, like, training yeah. and competing. But after my silver medal, I did go out. And nice. I was like, you know, 3 a.m., yeah. Macca's was closed. And I'm yeah. banging on the window showing my medal. Come on, <laughs> please. I <laughs> want some chicken nuggets. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I became, like who was so it? Was it was Benny and Danny. And there was a bu- there was a few of us there. I'm like, come on, I got my medal. <laughs> they were closed. So I think they closed at 2 a.m. or something. Wait, did they you not didn't have get the chicken Olympic nuggets? Macca's? Yeah, yeah. That one was closed. Oh, not in the village, yeah, so right. this was outside in Wait, the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so an Olympic Maccas? There's a Maccas in the Olympic yeah. village and you get athlete, free McDonald's. Athlete food, man. Yeah. Because is that were the food hall so open backwards. 24 hours? Is that It was pizza was 24 hours, yeah, but okay. the rest of the food hall would close. Yeah. Aren't you guys eating like acai bowls and <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't eat that shit, but that night <laughs> That Super night smoothies. I thought it was pretty yeah. cool that my medal got me Maccas. Oh, it got you in? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They oh. totally gave the whole crew Maccas for free. <laughs> oh, my God. 50 nuggets on the I house. Because I had my silver medal. I was like, I think that's maybe one of the best things my medals have ever got yeah, me. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but it wasn't till then. Like, yeah, okay. I did like um, yeah. have a couple nights out, which was yeah. fun. Big nice. discotheques in Russia. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, yeah, oh, I feel yeah. like I failed. Like I was too focused on stuff. I failed. Yeah. I feel like if I had a better result, I probably would have had a lot more going on. But I didn't really have much <laughs> going on. No one really wants to talk to the chick who got 11th. So I kind of had a lot of spare time after the games. And But I really – I was soaking it in. Like I went and watched a couple – like uh, speed skating, curling. Like, See, I feel like that is like – that's what you need to be doing. Yeah. So. And I, I feel bad for all the like people that are going to come to China and they're not going to get to do that. It's really in and out. And if it's like what the Tokyo Games was like, you have 48 hours to leave after your event and then you get like fined. Really? If you don't leave or something like that. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. I would, so it's yeah, kind of sad. sad. Yeah. So I am... And you should be pumped that you got that experience yeah, because I, I don't am. think these next yeah, be games weird. are going to be yeah. the It's the not going to be the same. And I don't think spectators are going. It's like my family's probably not going to yeah. be there. And mm. so Hopefully there's well, the Maccas. Hopefully there's still Maccas, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What I do hope, though, I hope that we can all gather 
so that we're there like together watching as a community home, watching yeah. and, che- and cheering you know so. the, the snowboard community 100%. like team transfers getting together yeah. with all the northern beaches shredders yeah 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 <laughs> no no we're I putting on so. a big viewing party yeah, yeah. good yeah you we've should. been we've been talking to cinemas yeah, yeah. that'd be sick yeah oh, amazing <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah. But yeah, hopefully um, by Italy, it's, everything's back to normal and yeah. we can have a good games in Milan. What what year is that? 2026. 2026. Dude, it's so trippy. Like, oh my God. 2026. Wild. Then 2030, then wow. Oh my God. Wild. Yeah. I don't even want to know what the girls will be doing at those events. There's some insane girls coming up, like in the States. Yeah. yeah. Who? There's this chick called Patty Sparkles. Well, her real name's not Patty Sparkles, but her Instagram name's Patty Sparkles. Like Little Patty? Little Patty. Little Patty. Rips little Patty. in the pie. Yeah. She was doing scary. like switchback I've, sevens I've in the pie. I, I and think she's her name's like Patty Zoe. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's this other chick. Um, she's a 12-year-old. I think she's from Korea, but Ben Wisner was coaching her in Mammoth. And she was doing like back nines and she's 12. It's crazy. Like, and front nines. I'm like, it's going to be wild. I'm like, yeah. thank God by the time she's 16, yeah. I'll be done. <laughs> Dude. I don't know how to do with that. But it's um, just amazing to see like generationally how much it's progression wild. there is. Yeah. And I mean, Emily, you're a part of that. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty hyped to be a part of it. But um yeah. I think it's I'm so excited to see where the sport's gonna go and I think it'll be really cool. Hopefully we can do some different things in pipe to keep it exciting and still going yeah. on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm. Uh, I just learnt so much more about you, Emily. Yeah, it's been really, really cool chat. <clears throat> I'm glad. I think it was uh, fun. Yeah, I know. I, f- for me, and I think for a lot of the listeners, it's like you never get the behind the scenes story to everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for you know putting it all all out on the table. Yeah, it's, thanks um, for being yeah. vulnerable and sharing those like it's been hard great, moments. No, <laughs> of course. I think it's important. To talk yeah. about it is important in case some other kid maybe thinks they're not going to make it because they want a child prodigy as well. Yeah. yeah. So. And I think, um, you know, I think there's some really solid points that we touched on with, you know, no half pipe, no half pipe access, and kind of where where your head's at heading to the games and, yeah. and where you want to take your snowboarding. So I mean, for me personally, transfer. I know for Tori as well. It's like really excited to see what you're only 22 years old. Uh, you know, what are you going to bring for the next, I don't know, 40 years? The, the yeah. team, the team too. Like you're a part of a really, yeah, you really got a rad Olympic team. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be sick. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited to watch everyone. And I think that in itself yeah. has just revitalized to some degree the Australian snowboarding industry. Yeah. Like uh, from transfer's perspective, like there is this resurgence. You can just see it around town at Jindabyne. There's this yeah. resurgence there are so many people snowboarding and there are so many people that are in tune. And I think it's because you guys, there is such a solid team heading into the games and there are so many younger kids looking at you guys going, yeah. holy shit, like I'm from the far south coast of New South Wales. I have access to the snow. Mm. I can do this. Yeah, If exactly. I put my you know, mind and heart to it, I can do it. So yeah. no, thank you and thanks for the chat. No, thank you for having me. It was fun. Awesome. You're awesome. Yeah, you're awesome. Aw, you guys.